I am recording the webinar. That way we can post it afterwards in the forum as well as in the help center and on the YouTube page that we have. Um, so if you need to leave early or if you jump in late, that way you can come in and look at it after the fact and not miss anything. We've got a few other of these sessions posted already. So feel free to go back and look at those as well. But sometimes it helps just to be in one live. As far as questions go, we'll start taking questions. Um, at any point, I just ask that you keep them on topic for what we're discussing and we'll pause to answer those every so often. If you have additional questions, um, then we can answer some more of those towards the end. I would also ask that you use the Q&A feature down below. That's the easiest way for us to keep track of the questions. If not, they often get lost in the chat and that makes it tough for us. And you'll hear me repeat this several times because we always have people coming and jumping in. So um, sorry for being a little bit of a parrot. Let's see what time we've got. It's 12 o'clock even now. I'll just give a couple more minutes. I know we had quite a few people RSVP for this, but with time zones, it makes it really hard for people because they don't know what time is what. I have a hard time, honestly. I'm in a different time zone now than I usually am in. So, um, I also get my times mixed up with my meetings. And Melanie is gonna be our host today. She'll have her camera off while she's talking, but then uh, whenever we go into the Q and A portion, she'll have it back on, but we will have slides up so that you can follow along for this. All right, 12.01 now. Let's go ahead and get started. I think people will probably slowly trickle in and I'm okay with that. Um, like I said, Melanie is gonna be our host today. Melanie is a veteran rubber. She's also, I think I can say it. Are you, an, can I say that you're an expert? I just did. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Melanie's Experts also, are a secret. <laughs> yeah, Melanie is also an expert. Um, she has hosted quite a few of these sessions and I really appreciate it. She's really good at it and she's a really good teacher. Um, You'll find her on the forums as well. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. And again, for those new people coming in, if you have questions, please use the Q&A and try to stick to what we're talking to, the topic of it. If you have any off-topic questions, let's try to keep those for the end of the session. All right, Melanie, go ahead. Thank you, Beth. And my on-topic today's topics are payment information, graduation, and getting help. So we're not going to be talking about any style guide specific questions today. If absolutely nobody has any questions left at the end of the, of the session, I might answer some of those, but in general, we're not talking about style guide today. Normally I jump in to the first thing, but a little housekeeping note. I know most trickies are wondering where is the work? I thought there was going to be work. I thought I was going to be making money here. Please remember that last week was Thanksgiving in America, and most of our clients are American. We do have a lot of British and Australian and, and a few others, but most clients are American. So Thanksgiving is a big deal in America. A lot of people did not work Thursday at all. Most people were off Friday as well. That's why the queue has been so slow and why it's practically dead this morning. I've been keeping an eye on it. And at one point I saw zeros all across the board. There was no work for anybody who was not at plus level. So I'm sorry, but hopefully this afternoon things will start picking up again. I will warn you that as we get close to Christmas and New Year, the work level will drop down again for the same reasons. Rev doesn't make the work, the clients make the work. And if they're not working and they're not sending files in, then we don't have anything to transcribe or caption or subtitle if you're in subtitling. So that's why things are so slow right now. Hopefully after the first of the year, things will pick back up and will be normal again. But right now, don't expect a lot. So this is a good time to be learning things. If you're not working, it's a good time to be going over things. Now, as a forum member and as an expert, I've seen three main things come up that people want to know about. And that's what this webinar is about. First of all, payment information. People have seen online, they go looking up information about Rev and say, oh, Rev's a scam, you're not going to get paid. Well, I've been here over four years. I've always gotten paid. Rev is legit. 
they will pay you. Do your work and you get paid. So what you want to know is REF pays every single Monday for the past week's work, which ends on Saturday. So it's Sunday through Saturday is the week, and then you get paid on Monday, even if it's a holiday. My first year here, Christmas was on Monday. I still got paid. The other thing to remember is that pay is based in the Pacific time zone. That's the West Coast of America. That's California, that time zone out there. There is no set specific time that pay will go out, but it's it will always be in by 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific. You'll never get it before 6 a.m. Pacific time, uh, sometimes a little bit later than that, sometimes in the middle of the day. So please don't panic if you get up first thing and your money's not in your account. Just be patient and wait. If it's after 5 p.m. Pacific and you still haven't gotten it, then please write in and ask for help and try to figure out what's going on with your account. Now, the big thing that you need to know is that you have to have a fully verified PayPal account for the money to be able to go to you. And yes, PayPal is the only method that Rev offers. Now, in the US, to have your account fully verified, I believe what that means is you have to have it connected to a bank or possibly to a credit card. I did mine a long, long, long time ago, so I don't know the exact details of how to do that, but all of that information is available on PayPal. And it's your responsibility to make sure that your account is completely verified per the requirements for your country. Now, I know there are a lot of new revers uh, from India, and it's my understanding that there, you have to set your account up as a business account for some reason due to government regulations. Rev does not know all of the rules for that. That's something that you need to work out. There are a number of Indian Revers on the forums. You can go there and do a search and ask other people for uh, ideas and discussions about that if you need some help. Now, the second thing that you want to make sure of is that the name and email address on your Rev account settings under the payment details page make sure that it matches your PayPal information correctly and completely. For example, let's say your name is Jonathan Smith and here on Rev, you signed up as John Smith. That's fine, no problem. But if your PayPal says Jonathan Smith, then on the payment details of the account settings page, that page needs to say Jonathan Smith. And you need to make sure you don't have any typos in your address or anything like that. Same thing if you're using, like, say, your spouse's PayPal. That's perfectly fine to do. Just make sure that on the payment details page, it has your spouse's name, not yours. Now, if you get to payday and your account isn't fully verified or you realize that, oh, I didn't match up the name correctly or I have a typo, you're going to get an email that says you've been paid, but when you try to get to it, you're not going to be able to claim it. So what you need to do is get all of that taken care of, whatever it is. And then the next Monday, Rev is going to automatically reissue it. You don't have to do anything. So it will reissue that payment for you. Now, if you realize that you made a mistake or you didn't put the correct full name, on the payment details page and you need to make a change, you can't do that yourself. You need to write to this email address in the red box here, account changes at rev.com and let them know, here's why I need to change it. Here's what the correct information is and they'll get that fixed up for you. And then those payments can be reissued for you. Now, the second thing that everybody wants to know is how do I graduate? How do I make it to Rever? The first thing to remember is that you do have a limited number of minutes to graduate and Rev is not going to keep telling you, you only have 20 minutes left, you only have five minutes left. That is on you to look at your metrics page and understand that. Now here are the numbers that you're given and these recently changed. Transcription rookies, you guys can graduate at 65 minutes if your metrics meet all of the benchmarks. But if you don't meet the minimums at 65 graded minutes, 
then they're going to give you up to 135 more minutes. That's a total of 200 possible graded minutes that you get. For caption rookies, your numbers are 60 and 200. If you don't graduate at 60, same thing. You get up to 140 more minutes for a total of 200. Now you don't have to use all of those extra minutes if you have to go into that extension. As soon as you get your metrics up to where they should be, you will graduate immediately. But these minute extensions that are offered are the one and only extensions that you can receive. And like I said, there are no warnings, no emails that if you're close to failing, uh, they're not going to tell you. It's all there on the metrics page for you to know and understand yourself. On the metrics page, you'll see a chart that lists all of your metrics. Now, I've been told that newer rookies coming in are seeing a slightly different metrics page than what we've had for the last couple of years, <clears throat> and that soon all rookies will have a new page. I have not seen a screenshot of that yet, so I don't know exactly what it looks like. And so I don't know if it's still the circle chart or if it's something slightly different, but it's, it's going to be all of the information that you need, however it's presented to you. There should be a red box on there. If you're below in any metric, there should be a red box that tells you how many perfect jobs you need to graduate and you do have to do that many jobs. Now, what we recommend from the very beginning, if possible, is stick with short jobs. And my slide says five minutes or less. I meant to change that. Now that rookies get up to 200 minutes, I feel comfortable saying you can stick with short jobs of only 10 minutes or less because you've got enough time to do that. And especially in transcription, even 10 minutes can be hard, but it's worth it to be patient and wait for those files. And there are several reasons why. First of all, your short files, especially the ones that are five minutes and less, they get graded more quickly. And I know that some of you have probably waited for days or even weeks recently for some jobs to get graded. It's hard to wait. And so you don't want to wait if you can help it. So if you do short jobs, they're going to get graded more quickly. Graders tend to grab those first. So you get that feedback faster and you can apply those grading comments to your next job. And it's very important that you wait for those comments to come back so that you can read them and you can learn from your mistakes. And then Hopefully you won't repeat that and you won't get graded down on your next file for something that you did before, but since you didn't know about it, you repeated it. If you wait and you learn, then you won't repeat those mistakes. Secondly, of course, there are not as many things to mess up in a short file because the content is shorter. And lastly, the most important thing, it is really, really important that you have as many individual grades as possible when you graduate. Grade metrics are just simple averages. And just like with school grades, when you are in high school or college, the more individual jobs that go into the average, the better, because that means that each one has a smaller impact on your average. So if you get the occasional bad grade, it's not as big of an impact. If you graduate from rookie with only two or three grades, I have talked to so, so, so many people who did that and then got one bad grade after they graduated to Rever, and then suddenly they were on a 120 day warning, which is what happens if you go below the minimums as a Rever. So let's try not to do that. Have as many individual grades as possible when you graduate. And I forgot to change this red text here. It is 200 minutes despite, <laughs> despite my old slide. I thought I had fixed everything in my slides. They just uh, changed this this last week. So when you get your grading email back, you want to read all of them, even if you got all fives, because it's rare not to get any comments at all. So even if you only made one tiny mistake, you, you might have gotten a five five, but it was still a mistake and you need to not repeat that. Something else to remember as a rookie, a lot of people don't know this, graders don't 
look at the entire file, unless it's 30 seconds or less in captioning or one minute or less in transcription, we don't look at the entire file. We only see clips of it. So you want to look at your review file and look at the clips that the grader saw. And anything outside those clips, you might still have some errors in it, but they just weren't seen because the grader did not look at them. Now, when you're working, whoops. Okay. When you're working, you, or even just previewing when there's time to preview and there's not time to preview files these days because there's so little work. But when you're working, you may realize I need help on something. I don't understand this. I don't know how to apply this concept from the style guide. Or I've looked in the style guide. I can't find it anywhere, but surely there's a rule for this. So how do I get help? One thing that you can use is what's called ask an expert. And I'm one of the members of the expert team pool, whatever you want to call it. We're just revers. We're not employees or support or anything like that. We're just experienced revers who know the style guide inside and out and all kinds of things. So you can use that. Uh, it's available in line and in dash. Uh, if you're on another page of Rev, it's available under the help menu at the top of Rev. So maybe you have a question about your earnings page or your PayPal or some other thing. It's always available at the top of Rev. And if you just can't get through or you can't find what you're looking for, you can also just write to support at rev.com. That goes straight to the experts first. And then if it's something we can't help with, we'll send it up to support. But most questions we're able to answer. If you write in to ask an expert, please make sure that you include the sharing link like you would use for Lend an Ear and tell us whether you're doing transcription or captioning. That way we know who's the best person to help you. And write your question in full. Don't just write out a couple of words like a keyword search. We're not a search engine. We're, we're people that you need to ask questions to. So write your question in full, put your link, and we'll help you out as soon as we possibly can. But we're not always available. Or if you just don't want to use experts, you just want to talk to other revers, you can use the forums. These are linked from the style guide. They're linked to the top of Rev. And there are just tons and tons of really nice people there, revers who've been around for a long time, people who've been there longer than I have and are very experienced with questions. And they love to help out people who come in and have questions and are honest about, okay, I've looked this up. I can't figure it out. Please help me. And so they'll be glad to help you out if people are around. Overnight in America, overnight hours, maybe not as many people available, but you can always try. And also the forums are just a great place to socialize. That's not their main function, but they are a great place to just talk to other revers and just find out things and just have a little fun when you're not working on a file. Now, if you have a question about a specific thing that you can't hear, the audio is difficult, or you don't understand the word, you can hear it, but it just doesn't make sense to you, that's where you want to use the Lend an Ear forum. And that's found inside the forums. There are links from the style guide. And what you want to do is go there. There's a link at the top that explains to you how to create a good post. Make sure you put something useful in the title like uh, banking terminology, Australian accent. And then so maybe somebody who's familiar with banking or maybe somebody who's familiar with Australian accents, they can stop in and take a listen to it. You need to put in your sharing link. You need to write the words before and after the spot that you can't hear. And uh, make sure when somebody stops by to help you and they help you resolve it, make sure you thank the person. Make sure you edit your title to say resolved or submitted or unclaimed if you decide, nope, I'm stuck. This is not a good file for me. I'm just going to get rid of it. Make sure you change your title and then people know that you don't need any help for it anymore. And then the last way that you can get help, if you go to the help center and you look down in the bottom right corner, 
you should see a blue bubble there that says, I think it used to say help, but I think now it says support. And if it has a question mark in the blue bubble, nobody's available at the moment. But if there's a little speech bubble, like in a comic, then a live member of support is there. You click on that, it brings up a little window and you type in your question and you start a conversation with that member of support and they will help you out. This is especially helpful during those overnight hours where experts might not be available and there might not be as many people available on the forums, but I believe they are available most of the time these days. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to give you one last word of warning. Please do not ever, ever, ever submit an unfinished file. Sometimes new people, they get in, they panic, they're running out of time or something comes up and they think, oh, well, I'll get part of the pay for this if I, if I submit it or somebody else can finish it. Well, that's not the way it works. What you want to do is if you can't submit the file, if you've gotten in over your head or your power's gone off or whatever the reason is, is you need to unclaim the file. Don't ever submit an unfinished file for any reason whatsoever because you will get all ones, your pay will be revoked for it, and you face the possibility of account closure after they review your account. So just don't do that. You do get extra time. I'm not going to go into all the numbers today, but there is extra time available past the original deadline. And you can read more about that in the Help Center. So please don't panic and submit something because you're running out of time. You can get some extra time, or if that's not going to be enough, just go ahead and unclaim it so somebody else can get started on it and get that back to the customer. So that's wrapping up those three top questions that I see all the time. And so now we should have a little time available that we can take some general questions and uh, see what every, what's on everybody's minds these days other than where's the work, where's the work? Thanks everybody. Um, so you can put your questions into the Q&A section. Melanie, we already have one for you. Um, okay. What will happen if the grades are not up to the mark after completing 200 minutes? Then in that case, you will be deactivated. That's just, that's just the way it is. Your numbers are there available all the time. And we do have a webinar called um, um, Rookie Metrics. And that is in the forums. Uh, I don't have a link to it here on my slide but um, that explains more about how the minutes work. Now that is using numbers from the old uh, 100 and 150. Uh, but yeah, if, if you don't get all of your metrics up to where they need to be by the time you reach 200, then you will be deactivated from that service line. You would be allowed to apply for the other service lines that Rev offers. So if you're in transcription and you're deactivated for your metrics, then you can uh, apply for captioning or you could apply for uh, for subtitling and vice versa. But you wouldn't be able to reapply to the same service line. Anybody else have any questions? Anybody struggling with anything so far? Trixie, uh, I'm glad to hear that you, you've had uh, a good experience with the payment so far. I know South Africans sometimes have trouble with uh, payment because of the way that PayPal is set up with having to go through that FNB uh, profile thing that <laughs> makes it more difficult. But uh, I'm glad to see that you've gotten that figured out and that it has worked for you. Uh, we've got another question here. Can you please repeat the part regarding lend an ear? You mentioned that it should be noted where the problematic piece starts and ends. How? Okay. When you are creating a sharing link, what you want to do is stop the uh, file just a second or two before the spot that you're stuck on. 
And when you create that sharing link, that is exactly where that link will take people to. And then you just put that link in your post. And like I said, there is a link at the top of Linden Ear on both sides that explains more about how to do that. There's also a short video that has been linked at the top of those forums that is on the Rever HQ channel. So you can also go to Rever HQ and look that up that explains more visually how to do lend an ear. So you want to go in, you want to paste in your link and you want to type the words of the sentence. So a couple of words before and a couple of words after. Like if the sentence is, this is live in, in New York, then you would type in, this is blank, live in New York. And you'd say, this is what I can't figure out. Can someone help me with it? So you want to have a meaningful title. Don't just put lend an ear or please help. That doesn't mean anything. Use a meaningful title that helps people know a little bit about what's going on in your file. And I know people have mentioned before, you know, if there are accents in the file, it's helpful to list those in the title as well. Yep. Um, so, you know, like British accent, it probably could even be more specific than that, I'm sure, for the different regions, but you get my gist. Yeah. Um, uh, this may be one you can or can't answer. Please repeat how we can get paid in South Africa. Um, I, I only know this a little bit. I do know from reading the forums that you have to have an FNB profile. You don't have to bank with FNB from what I understand but you do have to have their profile and uh, then you use that to withdraw your money from PayPal. And then there are a bunch of South Africans on the forums who've discussed this several times. So if you just go to the forums and there's a magnifying glass in the top right and you can put in like South Africa or type in FNB, that's F as in Frank, N as in Nancy, B as in boy, uh, just type those in the top right corner and that will bring up some posts that explain a little bit better from fellow South Africans. And I see somebody um, in the in the chat as well listed how you can do that, which helps a lot. Um, yes. It's hard whenever you're not doing it yourself. But if anybody has any questions about how payment works for them specifically, um, since Melanie is in the US, you know, we may not know exactly how it works, but you can always reach out to support at rev.com. And they're more than happy to, to get you set up there. Well, if you write to support at rev.com, you're going to get experts and we're going to, we're going to tell you, I don't know. <laughs> You'll have to take care of that yourself. If you, if you go into your email and directly list out support at rev.com, it should first go to support. Um, hi, I have completed my profile on PayPal, but somehow the payment hasn't been transferred yet. Any suggestions? Okay, have you gotten any emails from PayPal about your uh, payment, like maybe it was canceled or something like that, or have you not gotten anything at all? No, okay, okay. I think that would be one I would reach out to support for that. Yeah, they, they would be the better one since it's usually a specific use case. Sorry, we couldn't be more help there. It's, it's either going to be that you've got to finish fully verifying it, or if you happen to be in India, you've got to get it set up correctly. Um, but like Beth said, different countries have different banking re regulations. So I'm sure PayPal in every country works slightly different. Yep. Any other questions about getting started? Has anybody started any of the training files and had any troubles or finished them and done well and felt good about it? Okay. 
Well, I'm gonna give everybody a little bit of their time back. Um, if you have any further questions, this will be in the forum again posted. It may take a few days for, for the recording to be posted because we get it captioned, um, but you can always comment in that form thread and ask questions and people will gladly help you. I'll help you as much as I can. I'm sure Melanie will be peeking in at it. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time to come today and I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving holiday if you celebrated and I hope everybody has a great week. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.